RCs. And tonight we're going to start on bag 5, the differential for the DR10 drag kit build. So let's get started, guys. Let's book out of the way. showed you some motors that I thought I might use. I was going to go 3900 with this and uh, to start and then I got checking into that new low C that's coming out and that new low C comes from the factory with a 5600 kV in it guys. That's crazy. The DR10 ready to run only comes with the 3300 to start. So I mean that's crazy. This low C is going to be so much faster than the DR10. So what I did is I went out and ordered uh, a couple motor systems today. I couldn't find a 5600 that I wanted, so I got a 5400. Uh, 5400 system coming in with a 120 amp PSC, 2 to 4S, and I have a uh, 2 to 3S, 5200 kV motor and uh, ESC coming in. So I think uh, I think we'll be comparable to that low C with one of those motors in it. Especially with the gearing. You can play with the gearing. We can get it so it works. From what I've heard though guys, the low C is kind of heavy. I guess if you was going to take it to like a no prep drag race, it's over their weight limit. And I guess the reason being is because it has that aluminum, aluminum four pan in it. Instead of like the DR10, the whole chassis is carbon plastic or whatever here. The, the low C is aluminum for the bottom hand, which would give it better traction, I would think, because it's going to be a little heavier, but therefore where it's heavier, it, it doesn't reach, it doesn't meet your limits for your drag racing guys, so you wouldn't be able to use it on, a, like if you wanted to actually go out and drag race with a group, which I thought was kind of stupid that they have a weight class of that. But it must have been because of the cars they were using at that time, that's probably the heaviest they were. It's just kind of nuts. Alright guys, so we'll get started here. Try not to run my mouth too much here. Get this together. i put this on. Get this big O-ring. So I'm going to go with the washer. Then you go with the big O-ring. Then you go with the little... Is that, is that little tiny? Yep. Yeah. This little tiny o ring. This little orange one. I think that probably goes right in that little seal right there. There's a little groove on the arm. Yep. And that's going to try to help. So you got two seals to try to keep this from leaking, guys. That's kind of cool. Hopefully that works. So we'll take our housing. We're going to stick it in. Actually, if I stick it in there, guys, I don't want to put it in dry. Let's, uh, let's lube this baby up a little bit. That way we don't risk the chance of uh, tearing our rubber here and having a spill. You know, that would suck. Go all through all this, put it together, and rip the rubber, putting it in here, the O-ring, you know, the rubber O-ring. That would be terrible. So now you want to grab the other big washer, drop it in over the top, that shaft. Pliers here. Where are they? Yeah, they are. A nice long needle nose. I didn't pay mine. I just slide it out real quick. I didn't pay mine to where the hole was. There it is. Now there's only one spot that can go in on the cover. Okay, guys. Right here on the side, you have four slots. Okay, where your gears are going to set in. One of these slots goes all the way to the base. The other three don't. So line your pin up with the slot that goes all the way to the base. That way you can get your pin in. Okay? Because that's the only way you can get the pin in and out of these. Put that back in there. Grab my little pin. With my pliers. Go to that slot. Get it down there. And I don't think I lined it up, I guess. I thought I did. Let's try that again. There it is. 
half away with it. I'm going to drop this planet gear in there. Spin it around until it locks down. Click, just like that. Back to the top view here. So that's clicked on there. Okay, guys, I'm going to just set that aside for a minute. shafts. Okay. Now it looks at it with all these washes here. We're going to have shims. Tapered side goes in. Grab your little shim. Put it on the back. The same on the other side. Put your gear on. Taper side in. I see another uh, O-ring on my table here, and I just wonder where it goes. So once you get your dip, your two uh, your gears on, and your little washers, guys, just drop it in the hole, and probably drop stuff like I just did to wash it. No biggie. You can not, you can drop it in the hole and push your gears out after too, guys. It's a lot easier that way. So you just drop it in, then slide your gears over. Do the exact same thing on the other one, making sure you try to keep that notch straight up and down. That way these lock together so that's the same thickness all the way across when it's together. So put your gear pointed in. Grab your washer. Remember one side's flat, one side's rounded on your washer, round side towards you. She falls down in smooth, guys, right there. See that? Want that nice and smooth in there? So it's nice and even. Give it just a little wiggle, they work. Don't turn it all the way, they'll pop out. Okay, so now we'll start on the on the inside of the cover. And that's just going to be doing the basically the same thing we just did. Except, I don't see another tiny rubber here, guys. And I need another little O-ring to go here. I'm not seeing... Oh, there it is, under the pipe. Woo. It was under the gasket. Whew, I was getting nervous. I was going to say, this needs both gaskets, just like that other side does. It's the same exact thing. And I just messed up already, guys. Guess what I forgot to do. i got to put the washer on first. Washer. Get off me. Flat side towards the shaft. Now grab your big O-ring. Slide all the way to the washer. Now grab your little orange O-ring. Orange or brown O-ring. Roll that down into that little groove. There we go. Beautiful. Give it a little shot of your love oil here. This synthetic grease. This stuff's pretty decent, guys pretty cheap too. It's like seven something a bottle. I got it on Amazon. Oh, that's tight. That's a good sign, I hope, guys. That was nice and tight. That hopefully that means that we won't have any leaks here. We'll do the same thing. We'll grab our pin. Slide it in. Center it. Drop your planet 
Yee around. And you gotta twist until it drops down on all the way. And there you go, you have that. Now we wanna fill this. They give us 500K for the diff guy, so that's what we're gonna run. And if I find later I want something different, then we'll uh, obviously upsize to something different. I wonder if I wanna make that old bigger. That's like a chapstick. Look at that thing, guys. It's like a chapstick. <laughs> what the? I don't know. We'll see if it comes out. If not, oh god. Well, it will come out because I just popped the end right off it by giving it a little squeeze. So that's good. Look at that stuff. <laughs> that's some thick stuff. Remember, you want to put that in until it comes up to the top of your gear. Now, this stuff's going to be thick, guys. So it's going to take a minute for this stuff to settle into the bottom of the gear. Like I say, we might find later we want to go even thicker. And I've got uh, one million over here. Stop with that amount right there for now. I got one mil, twenty mil, I got all kinds over here. One hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. Okay, come on. Well, some sticky stuff. There we go. So what we're gonna do now, so you get that all jumbled up here. I'm just gonna let that set here for a minute and kind of melt its way in. And while it's doing that, guys. We might as well cut bag six open and uh, start on the transmission real quick. For now, we'll just, uh, yeah, for now we're going to go with this 89 tooth, guys. And uh, we'll put the, when I get the motor, and we'll get it all set in, and we'll try it like that. And then we'll throw, uh, we'll downsize and start putting uh, some other gear sizes to it. But for now, we'll stick with the, what they give us factory. here by the looks of it. It's a little barren stuck inside. There we go. Stuck inside the big barren. Now we just push these barrens into this housing. Wow, that fell in. I don't like that. I don't like it when they drop in that easy, guys. Because then that means if it's going to go in that easy, what's to stop the whole barren from spinning? I believe it gets a little one in the tunnel. Yes. This bad mamma jammer in here. Looks like the shaft, the gear, the slipper. Is that plastic? No, it's powdered. Okay. Wow, that scared me. But we don't want that right now. We want this, so we put some more barons in it. tight like that, then fall right in like it does in the case. There we go. Once you get it started in there, they don't pop in too bad. And there again, just push them till they go flush, guys. Once they go flush, stop. Now, we should have a little pin here, right here. It's going to go in here. It's going to allow us to drop that into this little groove right here. Shaft off 
obviously there's only one hole in the cover, guys. There's only one way it can go. Okay. Oh, I tipped it, spun that out. Just wanted to look where the bearing was here. That feels good. That bearing falls right out. Look at that. Turn it right over and it falls out. I don't like that at all. That bugs me. Let me put a drop of oil in that hole. See if that helps hold that bearing in a little bit. There we go. Keep that bearing from falling out. Right, put that back together. Put that back together. Bing, bing, bing. Now we need the differential to go in here, guys, and then we can slap this piece together. But, for so now, why can't we, uh... Slip it together here real quick and put the gear on it. It's not gonna happen, is it? You'll feel on your clutch pads. There's a flat and a smooth side too, guys. So pay attention to that. Go your spring. And go with your keeper plate. And then you're not. Now when you do your slipper, you want to tighten it all the way down and then back it off about a turn, turn and a half, guys, for your first try. And then after that, adjust it from there. So there, that's the rear end with the gear real quick. The rear end. There's your transmission in the gear real quick. Let's check this out. Ah, look at that, guys. Beautiful. It's melting in nice. Let's see if I can give it a little turn without popping them. Just to get the grease to pop under them a little. You see the grease rise up when I turn it a little. I did pop the gear up a little like I thought I would. No biggie. I'll just give it a little tiny push back. That looks good to me, guys. We're going to take the gasket now. Set the gasket on. Just a little paper gasket. So you want to be careful with it, guys. Okay, take your other cover, line your four pinholes up. Just click it on over. Okay guys, so that's simple. I'll take your little four pin head screws you have here that are 1.5s. And very carefully and slowly crank them in. Remembering to put them in evenly, guys. Try to screw everything in evenly. This one all the way, but I'm not going to tighten it. I'm just going to take it until it starts to push on the cover. Right there, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop the one directly across from it. Okay. That way, make sure we're nice and lined up. Now, this one I'm going to tighten in all the way, and then I'm going to go back across and tighten the other one up. I'm not going to reef it super tight though. Remember, we're going into plastic. And we don't have all of them in yet. So there, the minute you start to feel it tighten up, stop. And then proceed with your other two screws. Any excess grease that squeezes out, it's going to get all over your hands too. It's going to be on the side of the gear and stuff. Just wipe it over the gear teeth, guys, because that's what they want you to do with it anyways. They want you to put a little 500K on these gears for uh, lubricant. I was going to throw some of my regular grease I usually use in here, but uh, that's what they want me to do. That's what I'll try. See how she works. Once you get all four of your screws in, then just go around and give it a once over to make sure everything's nice and tight. I want my hand. Put it on that. Just like that. Mm -hmm. 
calling for the screws to go towards the side that the shaft does not come out of. Okay, I gotta grab a towel real quick, guys. Just real quick, right here behind me. I'm gonna be gone a split second here. And I'm back. That's some sticky grease at 500K. She's some sticky stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna take this 500K that's in this bottle still. I'm gonna squeeze some out onto this gear. should be plenty. Now we're just going to press the two together. Just like that. Now start adding our screws to it. Should be five of those screws. Right there, okay. One, two, three, four. Let's see the pictures. Pictures are a little dark, guys. It could be zoomed in a little better. Here, here, here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these so far. I know I am. Can't wait for that new low C to come out. Get my hands on one of them. Can't wait to get this built and get the snow around here gone so I can get out and have some fun. Try out some of these new RJ speeds I've built. I've got a lot of cars over there that I need to run. My Tamayo Road cars. I've got uh, a little pickup truck over there, Ford I made, that's a 4S, one-tenth scale. That, uh, I've got a pretty hot little motor on that I want to take out and do speed runs with. I got a lot of lot a lot of stuff to do once the weather gets better. I ordered a bunch of stuff today. Like I said I ordered those motors. I ordered uh some brushed ESCs to go with uh, some more of these uh, J-Speed builds and I uh, ordered a Coyote build kit it's Charisma Coyote it's like an old uh, Jeep pickup truck so we got that coming I uh, also ordered guys I ordered uh, Armor Infraction so that's coming to the channel soon Got to get myself a 1.7 speed car to try out. And from what I've been watching, those infraction V2s, out of the box, I saw a guy get 92 miles an hour on 6S. Out of the box. That's pretty good, guys. I'm just going to go around and get my once over. Remember, this is plastic. I notice any leaks or loosenesses. I'll tighten it up more. That's funny. Yeah. Let's see. Oh wow! I don't know. 500k in the dip in the transmission makes her a little tight. Oh. That's 
what they're saying. And to the top shaft, add saying a drop to the gears and to the top shaft. I might have gave it a hair too much of a drop, guys. We'll find out. Oh, well, I don't know. She's spinning now. She goes. Just got to get it worked in. Whew. All right. That's that. So we got the transmission built, guys. Clean up our excess oil and uh, grease here. Oh, for this plate, I'd say. Which I didn't put on before I put the gear on, guys. Because I was numbing it again. Come you guys didn't yell at me. Hey, you didn't put the plate on. No big deal. Everything's just finger tight. cover. So now we'll do this again. No biggie. Play it on. Upside down. My fingers stuck. These two twelves scrolling through the bottom here. Last two screws that I said, oh no, where do these go? And then go here in the back. Right here. Okay guys. Just gonna pull that up. So it's nice and tight. There you go. Start the hole. Just like that. This is Larry here at Mitchell's RCs. Say thanks again for swinging in. And uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Later.